Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com here. Now, my wife's had me putting the extractor fan today on today. Why? Because I've got eight rather rather lovely cheeses, it smells like. I mean, she doesn't like the smell of cheese, but I love the smell of cheese. Um, and they've come from a great cheese shop in London called La Fromagerie, and they've been specially chosen to combine with four wines from eminent Burgundian producer Louis Jadot. Um, let's see if they work. I've got another surprise wine to see, because um, I, I, this whole thing about wines and cheeses, but when people do bring out uh, these nice, lovely, runny cheeses, quite mature cheeses, often they partner it with a rather lovely, gentle, mature red. And for me, it's a real no-no. The, um, the, the, the flavours, the pungency of the cheese just rips away the subtlety of the red wine. So, when it gets to uh, right, soft, runny cheeses at the end of a meal, I, I, I almost re revert to white wines. Dry ones, maybe a bit of Sauvignon, um, or sweet ones. So I've got a, a sweet Loire one here uh, for later on. Uh, actually, I'm not going to do that one first. That's a poof we say. First one I'm going to do Bourgogne Chardonnay 2008 from Jadot. Uh, no, it's 2007. Let's taste it first, see what it's like. It smells easy, clean, um, quite what I call modern burgundy. There's a slight oaky nuttiness, a bit of vanilla, uh, some uh, yeah, vague citrus, a bit of melon. Smells good. Yeah, tasty, honest. Um, I mean, it's not uh, hugely complex, but it's, it's basic Bourgogne Blanc. That's what it's supposed to do. It's got that little bit of nutty subtlety. Um, tasty wine. Let's see what it's like with the cheese. First one that they recommend is uh, Comte. So, I'll flash up the details about the, com uh, the, the cheeses, because I have to confess, I'm not a cheese expert. So read all this blurb on the screen, see what you think. Um, very nice cheese. Slightly meaty, milky, nutty. Let's see how it goes. Seems to take away quite a bit of the fruit in the wine, but you're still left with this um, the structure and this like, nutty edge as well. The nuttiness there and the nuttiness in the wine go rather nicely together. Okay, next one, Reblochon. These are all cow's cheeses. Again, you'll see the details on the screen. Yeah, the cheese here is far creamier. It's a much softer cheese, um, very tasty. Has this um, almost like a grassy wildness too. That's, uh, you, you can really almost smell a little bit of the grass there. See, now what that does for me is it highlights the fattiness in the cheese, and I'm left with this fat cheese flavour in my mouth. For me, uh, the Comte is the one that works better there. I like the way the fruit works with the Reblochon, but I like the Comte... I like them both as cheeses, but I like the, uh, the Comte better with the Bourbon Blanc. Right, I can't swallow it. I can't talk and... I'm supposed to spit things like this out, but it's very difficult to spit cheese out. Let's move on to the Puy see. So, which is 2008. I'll just tip that into Tweet Pie. It's a year younger, and it smells um, It smells like it's quite a lot riper, and I don't know whether there's a bit of botrytis in here, but there's almost an exotic edge here, um, which, yeah, it comes across quite bold peach, melon um, flavours. Good. It's a richer, fuller wine than the Bourgogne Blanc, but is it a better one? I mean, it is, it is a louder wine, but I thought the other one was a bit more subtle. Hey, let's try it with this cheese. What are we on here? Chaos! It's a lovely runny cheese. It's one of those that uh, uh, there's, a, there's a quite a, a fat crust and then there's this gooey bit in the middle. Mm. It's almost like a minty, herby character to it. Really soft, creamy, and then in texture, it's got a slight grittiness. Very nice. Once again, I find that the cheese takes away the subtle edges of the wine. Uh, but it, 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 with the Puy Fuisse, because it is a bigger wine, it almost calms it down and says, right, okay, yeah, come down, come down a level. And um, so the balance, the, the combination, works okay, but the wine for me suffers a bit in the process. Right, uh, next one we've got Explorateur. And again, details on the screen. Yeah, it's got uh, something of the, that same slightly gritty texture to it, but it's nowhere near as pungent. feels like a younger... Um, maybe not, it doesn't feel like it's amazingly fresh, but it's got this uh, slightly salty bite to it, which is nice. With the wine, I find that a much more satisfactory combination, because... Um, Yes, it brings the wine down um, and uh, it makes it a more subtle wine, but in the process it doesn't then say, right, I brought you down a bit, now I'm going to walk all over you. Uh, the wine and the cheese sit really nicely together. Probably the best combination so far. Nice. Right, let's get on to reds. I was having a moan before about how the reds sometimes, uh, uh, if you want a subtle red, they're overwhelmed by, uh, by pongy cheeses. Let's see whether this, these, it works with these two. What have I got? Cote Grand Village. And we'll start with the Bourgogne Pinot Noir, 2007. And this has got a really lovely, wild, red fruit freshness to it. It smells like there's a bit of forest floor in there, there's a bit of funkiness, it's, it's showing a little bit of maturity, but it's not over the top, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's got a freshness to it. Freshness, but gentle maturity. Nice combination. 
if that makes sense. What I mean by that is the fruit's not gone into the over-the-top jammy edge, uh, so there's a punchiness to it, there's a bit of acidity, uh, but the maturity is coming through, it's got this slightly cooked flavour, cooked strawberries. You know, if you've if you ever uh, done those, those sauces where you just put berries in the pan with a little bit of sugar, and then after about 20 seconds, no more, you're getting that, that, that um, slightly uh, cooked edge coming through. Not jam, but slightly cooked fruit. Well, I don't know whereabouts in Burgundy that's from, but it's quite a classy wine, that. Um, it's got no hard edges. It's got um, this gentle red fruit softness, uh, maybe a bit of black currant in there. It's got a lot, bite of tannin, and it's got a fresh finish. Um, I mean, that's what, exactly what you want for basic Bourgogne Rouge. And um, don't go for basic Bourgogne Rouge at six pounds. This is, this is what's this, about 11 quid? Uh, 12 quid. So um, that's the level at which you now have to put to uh, spend to, to find decent Bourgogne Rouge. What are the cheeses? Let's have a look what cheese number one is. This is, I've got a list on the floor if I keep going like this. Um, this one is Beaufort. It's got much in common with the Comte. It's got this nutty chewiness. A um, bit of bite, um, refreshing, creamy. Um, and yeah, this, this milky finish. I can't describe it as anything else. Um, it, it's like, um, yeah, cooked, ever so slightly cooked milk. Not boiled, it's not got that slightly acrid, burnt flavour of, uh, of boiled milk, but yeah, warm milk. See, now this is where I get the problems with red wine. What it's done is it's brought the, it's brought the fruit flavours in the red wine down and it's left the structure. So, whereas before the acidity and the tannin didn't poke out, they were nicely in balance with the wine, here what's happened is uh, the cheese has stripped the, uh, stripped the melody line, if you want, and you're just left with the base. Uh, so you're left with the structure, not the grace notes. Not for me a great combination. Let's see whether the camembert is. It's one of those camembert that wanted to walk across the plate, so it's, uh, it's all stuck to my little platter here. Mm. Well, you've had camembert before, you know what it's like, but this is what camembert should be like. Forget those ones that are straight out of the supermarket fridge, where they're all sort of like, you have to chop it and almost like chisel a bit off. This is soft, creamy, and it's got that milky nuttiness. I can see quite a bit in common with the Beaufort uh, in terms of flavour, but it's got this extra creamy softness to it. It's, it's a much more voluptuous, uh, sexy cheese. But once again, even worse than with the Beaufort, it strips the fruit away. It strips away that, um, uh, that juiciness in, uh, that the wine had. I mean, it's a great cheese. I like the wine, but the combination, it just... Well, the, the, the cheese still sounds there and goes, hello, um, but the, um, the, the wine flavours just disappear. Not for me a successful combination there. The Beaufort worked slightly better, but um, that, even that wasn't great. Last one, Cote de Bon Village, uh, 2008. Pound more expensive, a year younger. Try the wine first. This is a dumb youngster. I mean, probably, I mean it's, it's almost like a teenager of, of a wine. It feels like it's, it's going to go, it's, it's a bit surly, it's a bit chunky. Um, there's things going on there, there's hormones going on. It feels like there's, there's lots and lots of potential, but um, it's not coming out to play today. I get this vague raspberry pastel and uh, cherry kernel character, but it feels like it's going to be quite a full-bodied, earthy, structured wine. Let's see. Maybe a bit of Britannomyces as well, but... Um, and I've got a feeling that this is going to struggle with the wine because it's so young. I'd love to see something like almost like a 2002 or a 2001 because it, the structure is so forbidding. And so all the structure, all the, um, all the non-flavour compounds are standing there going, it's me, the fruit's behind me and you're not going to see it today. Um, I'd love to be proved wrong, but let's have a see with the cheese. Okay, uh, what are we on? Uh, I think it's called Laguiole. Uh, it's the same place that they make the knives, the Laguiole knives and corkscrews. It's one of those cheeses that um, some people it, it happens with and some people it doesn't. But it feels like it, it would strip the roof of some people's mouths. If you've ever had um, those lovely mature cheddars, uh, some of those can, uh, can have the same character. And it's got something of that um, almost acrid pungency. Sounds horrible. I can feel the hairs on the head suddenly going, roo, roo, and it's that same character that comes through. Really full in flavour. I think the wine's going to struggle with this. It's actually not so bad. Um, it's, uh, that's a bit of a, a, a bit more of a standoff, really, than a, 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 a marriage, rather than making beautiful music together. The funny thing is uh, that the structure seems to actually work well with that acidity. And um, they, they, don't, they don't sort of clash too much, but there's a, there's a like, a standoff really but each maintains its voice i wouldn't say the partnership was great but um it's not bad let's see how it's like with the blue cheese last cheese i have is form d'ambert it's almost like hazelnut flavored stilton there's a slightly 
Yeah, that sweet, nutty hazelnut, even maybe with a bit of chocolate in there. Don't usually get chocolate in cheese, but and I don't normally write notes on, on cheeses. And it's not quite as strong as I thought it was going to be. There's a nice creaminess to it. Um, and um, very, very tasty cheese. But that's one of those classic ones. Combination, the fruit just goes. Um, it, it's, the, the cheese is just so assertive, so strong flavoured, so very tasty. Um, but it's too big for the, it's too big for the wine. Uh, it's one of these things, um, there are a lot of, uh, I, I notice it with sweet wines, uh, when people say, right, okay, we're having uh, a really rich chocolate pudding, and they bring out a bottle of Sauterne. Sauterne's not exactly an out and out, very sweet wine, it's sweet. But uh, there are lots of foods that will overwhelm it. Um, sweet, sweet puddings, I'm not sure I'll actually have it with cheese. Speaking of sweet wines and cheese, blah, 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 moving rapidly sideways, I have here a bottle of Cote du Léon from the Loire Valley, uh, Chaume, Cote de Léon, which is one of the, uh, the crew of the Cote de Léon, and uh, 1996, I've Domaine des Forges. So um, this is the sort of wine I'd love to have um, with quite a lot of these cheeses. Even the, I, I tend to keep red wines, if I'm going to have red wines with cheese, I tend to go for hard cheeses. Gouda, uh, old gouda, um, parmesan, um, old cheddar, soft cheeses, I'd certainly go for whites and probably sweet whites. So let's give this a whirl first, it might be corked. No it's not, it smells lovely. Ooh, 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 ooh. It smells like it's, uh, it's got that lovely uh, quince, apple crumble um, and lacy complexity that you get in, in Loire wines and it's halfway between the um, vigorous freshness of youth where the, the flavours just go and uh, the gentle maturity. Really nice stage. Oh I forgot to spit that out, never mind. Um, well now which one should I try first? Well I'm, I'm, I'm only going to try three of them. First one I'm going to try is the Reblochon. Well, I, I think I'm biased, but I, I, I don't find that a great combination, but I find it a good combination. I, I think that the wine survives, the cheese survives, neither is improved, but neither is diminished. Hmm. So let's try the um, Camembert with the, the wine. Let's try the wine again first, just to uh, refresh my mouth. Tasty wine, still very young. It's funny the camembert doesn't um, overwhelm that, um, and I, I find almost that the, um, the, the 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 Loire wine just has the again the slightly the upper hand there. Um, maybe you're going to this stage about depending on which your passion is. Are you coming from the wine side or from the cheese side? If you want the cheese to talk louder, then maybe you pick a quieter wine. If you want the wine to uh, to hold its own, then maybe you pick a food that will just be in humble subservience. Certainly, I've had these occasions not just with with cheeses, where but where someone has a really complex dish. Uh, main course and a really complex um, wine and the combination just doesn't work. Oh, I'm going to do some more. So let's try the Shaos. Now the Shaos was uh, was the one that slightly overwhelmed the Pui Fui so. Um, here I find that um, they, 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 they work nicely together um, and it, it brings out almost like a, a weird fruitiness in the cheese and highlights the fruitiness in the wine. I, I, I'm ashamed to say Louis Jado, sorry, but um, I, if you did make some sweet Loire wines, I have a feeling I'd prefer those. But um, on the strength of this, uh, yes, there are some cheese and wine combinations that work, and there are some that don't work. And But the thing is, the other thing is, how many things have I had? What the final thing is, whenever I've done food and wine matching exercises, uh, what I discover is that you put three dishes and three wines in front of um, different people, Everyone will like a different combination. What for one is the best combination will not necessarily be the best for somebody else. So here, uh, I'm always in two minds about uh, precise, being precise with food and wine. I've really enjoyed it. I thought the cheeses were fabulous. I thought um, the wines were really good too. Strangely, in each of the two cases, I preferred the basic Bourgogne to the to both the Puy Fuise and the Cote de Beaune Village, although I think the Cote de Beaune Village will come through. But the cheeses were fabulous. La Fromagerie, thank you very much. Louis Jadot, thank you very much. And see you soon.